In terms of uh, motion of the object, hmm, it's much easier to control this, the power grasp, okay, than this other one, okay, because it requires more knowledge about the object. In terms of, uh, um, okay, now now let's focus a little bit on what happens in terms of uh, um, controlling the object. Hmm? Now forget about the hand, <coughs> and you want to control the position of this object. Hmm? What do you do if you want to control the position of this object? You have to apply force to the object, because this uh, object has a dynamics, okay, inertia, acceleration, forces, um, whatever you want in the dynamics that you can uh, take, it's a rigid body object, okay? If you want to have a given trajectory from one point to another, you have to apply a force on it, okay? So controlling a grasp means controlling the force applied to the object. So at the very end, the action of the robotic hand or the human hand onto the object is uh, application of forces, patterns to the object, to go from one point to another, okay? Suppose that you know the dynamics of the object, you know how to go from here to here, you know the force, so you have a certain forces that you want to apply to the center of mass of the object, and you need now the goal of the people dealing with the manipulation and grasping, of the engineer dealing with the art of the manipulation and grasping, like the title of this uh, uh, course is to understand how to apply this force onto the object. Okay? Just to give you an example, if I have to keep the object in this way, hmm, then what's the control is? The control is very simple. This is in equilibrium, okay? So this object has a weight, so the, the the forces applied by the human hand or robotic hand is the same onto the object should be equal and opposite to the gravity force for the object to stay here, okay? Because if I don't apply a gravity force with opposite sign, the object goes, uh, if I leave my hand, I mean, the object goes down, okay? I will not do it because there is the screen here. Okay, now, so this means that uh, you have to control now remove the object and uh, you have uh, all the forces applied here to the object. Now you can imagine the forces applied onto the object. The equivalent of these forces should be equal to the weight. Okay? One can say, okay, look, this is very easy. Because if you put in a symmetric way the forces, you take the weight, you divide by four, and you apply one fourth here, one fourth here, one fourth here, and one fourth here, right? It's okay, so it's a good idea, no? Just apply a force here, a force here, a force here. So activate your motors, your muscles, in order to have, I don't know, this uh, uh, weights uh, mm, 100 grams, okay? Uh, 100 grams to apply 25 grams here, 25 grams here, 25 grams here, 25 grams here, with the opposite side, okay? In terms of uh, uh, forces, of course. <coughs> then you have to multiply by the gravity acceleration to get the, the force vector. But then, can you, so can you do it? Can you apply it? Is this the only thing that you have to do? No. Why? Because you have the contacts. Contacts is another story. To apply this force here, okay, you have to satisfy the friction constraint. Because at each contact, you have the friction constraint. So you can apply a force at the contacts only if the contact force stay in the friction cone. Because if you don't stay in the friction cone, you have slippage, okay, on the finger. So you want to apply these forces and you want to stay in the friction cone because you don't want to have any slippage on the ob object, okay? Do you agree? Hmm? So I will repeat it. So you can, uh, you say, uh, you can simply ap apply four forces directly in this way, which is one fourth of the weight, okay? But then you have to be sure that the contact constraints hold. And the contact constraints 
old if you don't sleep. Okay? If you don't if you don't sleep, only if the counter forces are inside the friction core. So you have to satisfy the constraint of applying the force that you want, staying in the friction core, which is very complex. Okay? So <coughs> the, the first thing that you do when you control a grasp is to control the contact force inside the friction cone and then apply a net force onto the object to resist the weight. Hmm? So if I, if I want to use my white right here, and uh, this is my two fingers, let me assume that now I have my just two fingers, exactly like this. Two fingers like this, okay? Hmm? I mean, just because I have a planner whiteboard, I want to use a planner case. And this is the Pomodoro. <coughs> Let's do it in red. Okay? Okay. Then you have this uh, weight. Okay, and then you say, look, you, you have to apply with your finger half of the weight in this case and this other case. Okay, maybe we can also, sorry, we can also add uh, some additional degree of freedom, otherwise it's uh, too simple. What I'm representing here are links and the joints, okay? This is one finger, this is another finger, one, two, and three joints, okay? And then you have the contacts and the fingertips, okay? <coughs> so, what happens is that this kind of force will certainly slip on the, on the Pomodoro. Why? Because if you zoom this, if you take a zoom of this area, you will have the Pomodoro, you will have the, the link, okay, and then you will apply this force. And this force, since it does not stay in the friction cone, it will slip. It will do something like this. Friction cone is, the, uh, is related to uh, mechanics, and it's, it says that a contact, okay, if you apply a force to this contact, okay, um, this point uh, that can be your uh, linkage, okay, mm -hmm. does not slip, okay, only if you apply a force that is within the friction cone. Mm -hmm. So if you apply a force that is within a friction cone, then you apply this force and you feel an opposite force. <coughs> if you apply a force like the, the green one that is outside the friction cone, then uh, this uh, finger will start uh, slipping and moving, okay? Mm -hmm. So you have to satisfy the friction cone. If you don't satisfy the friction cone, you start uh, slipping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, like uh, I don't know if you can see uh, my finger here. Can you see it? Yes. yes. Okay, now there is a friction cone and I'm applying a force in a friction cone, but as soon as I apply more component in the tangential plane, then I start slipping. Okay? And this is something that you don't want to do. Because every time that you slip, you have to change the model of your grasp. Because when you change the contact point, then it changes the application of forces on the object, it changes the momentum, okay, with respect to the center of mass, and you don't want to do that. So typically, we manipulate objects by staying with contact points that are fixed and you don't want to sleep. There are advanced studies that use slippage, like uh, doing something, uh, I don't know, something like this. I'm manipulating my pen by sleeping on it, okay? But when you write, you typically keep the, the, the fingertip at the, at, the, at the point that you want, okay? So fixed contact points. Well, to do this, what you want to do? Look at this uh, uh, general grasping. <coughs> so, 
So you have your uh, Pomodoro, okay. So you have your uh, contact, okay. So you have your friction constraints, and the friction constraints depends on the material of the of the contacts. To increase the friction, you have to make more uh, the material uh, with a higher coefficient of friction, okay. And then, if you want to apply this force, okay, then what you want to do is to apply a normal forces such that the interaction with the, the tangential force stay within the friction cone. Okay? I will, I will re remake the design. Redraw the design, so, so you have the two contact points, then you have your tomato here, If you want to apply this tangential force and you want to stay within this friction cone, even larger actually, this friction cone, then you apply this normal force. And then the, the overall force is this one. Okay, it stays within the friction core. Okay?